Russia to prepare for the new International Space Station by flying American astronauts as crew members on board Russia's space station Mir. She was selected to be the second American on board Mir, following Norm Thagard. In 1995, she moved to the Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, Russia, to begin a lengthy training course. There were, there were a lot of reasons I wanted to do it, uh, but one of the reasons was because I wanted to go to Russia and live uh, and train because I really enjoy living in different countries. I enjoy uh, getting along in different cultures. And I also the, uh, uh, wanted to know what it would be like to be on a long uh, space flight versus a short one. And so those were um, you know, all the reasons why I volunteered for this flight and why I wanted to do it. We spent a year in Russia training for the flight. And the in entire time that we were living there, we were speaking in Russian. As a matter of fact, there were a couple of weeks that would go by where I did not speak English to anybody except the person I was training with, John Blaha. And uh, this forced us to learn the Russian language, which we needed to know when we lived on Mir because the cosmonauts only speak uh, uh, Russian. And Russian is a very difficult language. It's a lot harder than English. but. Uh, we learned enough so that we were able to get by. In March 1996, the crew of STS-76 launched from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Their mission, rendezvous and dock with the Mir Space Station, deliver supplies, and drop off Shannon. There were a few days of joint activities and an emotional farewell. The shuttle crew undocked from the Mir and headed home landing back in Florida to complete a successful 10-day mission. It would be a full six months before Shannon would see her colleagues back on Earth. I guess one of the main reasons that I really enjoyed being up on Mir and working for a long period of time was because I've always enjoyed working in a laboratory and there I was on Mir. I had a laboratory that was basically mine, Perota, and it had all you know the United States experiments in there and they were very interesting experiments and there were a wide variety of experiments. So I could get up in the morning, I could sort of, you know, plan what I wanted to do, go to work in my laboratory, and then interact with other scientists. And I just really enjoyed doing that. I was extremely fortunate because I had two absolutely wonderful people uh, as crew people, as, as part of my crew. And that was Yuri Anafarenko and Yuri Usachev, two Russian cosmonauts. I don't think that it made any difference whether it was um, you know, what the mix was, the male-female mix. I think the important thing was compatibility of, of the crew. Yuri and Yuri and myself uh, were able to get along real well together, and the thing that we did most often was, you know, we would work together and we would laugh a lot together. And it just worked out so that, generally, we were having a good time. I never got tired of looking at the, out the window and looking at our Earth. It is just so beautiful. And the one thing that I really enjoyed on this long space flight was the fact that I was able to see the seasons change on the Earth. Now I started off in March, so as we were flying over the northern hemisphere, I would look out and I could see uh, the frozen lakes and I could see snow on, on all the uh, Central Asia as we flew over. And then in just a space of a few weeks, I saw the ice break up in all these lakes. And then I saw the snow melt and then the green fields you know, come up. And it was just a remarkable experience to see the uh, seasons change. One of the very beautiful things that I saw when um, I was up in the, uh, on Mir was uh, we had a real good pair of binoculars. And so as we flew over uh, Kennedy Space Center, and I looked down, I could see Atlantis on the pad ready to launch. And that was pretty neat. And then after Atlantis STS-79 launched, uh, we could see at, as it sort of uh, climbed up in the sky. And so that was pretty neat knowing that, uh, you know, somebody was coming to rendezvous with us and then I was going to get to come home. On a rainy day in September of 1996, Shannon Lucid was welcomed home to Houston by a hearty group of well-wishers, including the President of the United States. It's an amazing, amazing achievement. And I know I speak for all Americans when I say I think we all feel at least that we've gotten to know Dr. Lucid, watching her grin and bear it as the mission was extended, hearing her eagerness to see her family, her yearning for what she called the wind and the sun. Perhaps more than she knows, she has also set a remarkable example 
for a new generation of young Americans, and especially young girls all across this country who look up to her and now see new possibilities for themselves. And we thank her for that as well. After having been back on the planet for only 24 hours, she walked unassisted and gave a speech thanking everyone for their support. Uh, <laughs> no, it's just great to be home. And I want to say thank you to everybody that uh, supported the mission here on the ground. It was a great mission. It was a great adventure. I thoroughly enjoyed it. But the reason why it all worked was due to all the people that worked so hard to make it so great. And I am so thankful to all, everything that everybody did. And I'm glad to be home. And all I can say is Houston never looked so good. Thanks. Then she greeted the audience personally. So what's next for Dr. Lucy? If I had the chance, I would absolutely love to go to Mars. And I uh, think that some lucky person right now uh, that is going to school and they're studying their math and their science uh, will have that opportunity and I hope that I'm still alive to be able to watch them go because I think that would be an absolutely outstanding adventure. I think it is very very important for a person to enjoy what they do uh, as a career, what they, their work that they do for a living and I think that that should be the primary thing that a person considers when they're looking at what jobs uh, that they want to do. I don't think a person should pick a job because it you get a lot of money for it. I don't think you should pick a job because it has a lot of prestige. Uh, I don't think you should pick a job because that's what your mother and father want you to do. I think that you ought to have a job that you really enjoy and that when you wake up in the morning you think, oh great, here's another day that I can go to work. <laughs>